Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link, this week at the round table of dim lighting. We are exploring your nostalgic memories because we put out a prompt at Mythical on Twitter. So uh, be looking out there if you want if you want to interact with us and for us to read some of your submissions and talk about it. The the prompt that uh, we put out into the world is, if, what's one thing you could bring back from childhood that you wish you could, if you would? Would you? Do you? You and can't, pe- People took it in to. different ways, and it got us thinking about some things. So we're gonna talk about your childhoods, our childhoods. We're talking about some entertainment practices, we're talking about some toys, we're talking about some school experiences. Uh, we rounded up some good stuff, which, uh, Ring that old nostalgia bell, you know, we like to. Ding, ding. We like to look, we like to look backwards fondly. Cause hey, we lived it all together, man. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, I, I started in first I, grade. I spent some time alone. I had some girlfriends uh, that I got wrapped up with for a while. Yep, you kind of left me in the dust. Well, you could have done the same. You had the freedom to do the same thing. Yeah, but uh, you and, know, and I had. You, maybe even more opportunity to do that and still didn't take advantage of it. I had a Nintendo. I had a well, so did I. I had a Sega. Well, I know you did. Yeah. A, B, and C buttons. I think we were over in the Nintendo by the time you started getting into the the girls hot and heavy. <laughs> but uh, we'll get into all of that stuff. But first, I just wanted to share um, an experience that when I shared it, it's something that happened to me, something that I participated in. Usually that's what an experience is. Something I can is. take credit for. <laughs> this that, is an experience that happened to me. But when I shared it with my family, none of them they believed me. They didn't appreciate it. No, no, they didn't even believe that it happened. Okay, well, all right. That they, th- they thought I was making it up. I, would, I, told, I told Lily, and then I'm pretty sure she believed me because I thought I had proof. And then separately, I told, uh, Christy and Lincoln, and they didn't believe me, and then when I got Lily to tell them what I told her, it she, she turns out, I thought she believed me, but she didn't either. So now I'm gonna tell you the experience. Well, I'm not gonna believe you. Maybe, maybe you won't believe me either. Maybe I am lying. Maybe this is just a sensational story that is made up for entertainment, and for some reason you along with my family and everybody listening will just, Say, there you're he gonna is do again. a lot of damage to the reputation of yourself and this podcast if you're going to lie about something that happened to you because we do not do that. Sometimes we're mistaken. Some stories are about so good. some things that happened to us, but we never intentionally lie, lie about anything until right now, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> okay, all right. You be the judge. So you know how my backyard works. It's like this. It's, um, pave is pavers in a patio, the whole backyard is a pool and then a patio, there's no lawn back there. And then ne- neither of us have any grass. You have some fake grass. I have some fake grass. You have grass in the front. I have, yeah, I have lawn, lawn in the front, but in the back I just have, you know, the pavers go all the way to this this wall that is like a pony wall, it's like two and a half feet off the ground, and then there's like this cabling thing above that. You ever try to keep a pony up there just to see if it would cross it? I think the pony would stay in because it, it's kind of like a fence. And then when you walk close to the edge, which this is, I was I was gonna be doing some grilling. You saw you know, something, didn't you? And I looked down into my neighbor's yard below me. Oh, so you've got, doing you know, something. I'm on the hill and so when my neighbors, when I look down, I can, I, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty elevated. So I can look down and see, like if they've got, if they're outside eating, let's say, and they've got a table of food, I'm, I'm, I'm at such a height and vantage point that I could see the whole top of the table and everything that they're eating. You know, if anybody has a bald spot, I can see that. I'm looking down on these people, literally, not figuratively. Right. I don't even know them that well. But your house is higher, so it makes it. I mean, you are kind of also looking down on them figuratively. So the higher the house on the hill, the better, right? You want to be on the top row. I don't want to. I don't want to say that, but I'd like for you to say it about me. Okay. The higher the house on the hill, the better. You want to be the guy with the house at the top of the hill. I'm not actually. At, you I'm know, not all the way. Then the you're top. a target. You want to be the guy right next to the guy who's at the top of the hill. That's kind. Of, I don't really look. I go out my front door, and then there's a street, and there's people on the other side. So like, no one in their backyard is looking down at me. There's someone like your neighbor. 
in his backyard can look over and look down on you. But he really way, has to get a, a very he's intentional. Work at it. He's got to, and it has happened a couple of times where I'll be in my, you know, I like to, I like to be scantily clad in, in my backyard because it feels very private. And um, every once in a while, I'll just be, I'll be, I don't know, I can't remember his name. He's introduced himself several times, but he'll just be standing up there, hey! I'm just like, hey! And you're naked? I haven't been naked yet. I mean, I haven't been naked where, I think if he saw me naked. He wouldn't say hey. He would turn around and walk back. I don't know the couple that lives down below me. Um, you know, it's a totally different street that accesses their house. It's like, uh, we're like backyard neighbors, right? So it's like, it's kind of a strange, and they're so far down there. You wouldn't even know how to drive to their house. I haven't, haven't really had an interaction with them. I wanted to because they had this huge tree in their side yard that basically it blocks some of my view, but don't, don't it was get me huge. starting with don't I, get me started with neighbors' trees, man. You I know, know. that's a sore subject for me. Well, they chopped it down, which gave me a better view, but it just seems pretty open. And I'm, but I'm not going to hold that against them. And I'm, I guess I'm looking for opportunities to like. You had a problem with the tree, and they cut it down, and you're not going to hold it against forward. them. I don't understand the logic. I had a problem with them cutting down the tree because I liked it. Oh, you liked it. Yeah. Okay, you liked it. Because I'm so at such a height that like I was eye level with the the middle and top of the tree. I felt like I was the, in there. The foliage. I was in their tree. Yeah. I could see like birds at eye level. Mm, yeah. It was awesome. Right. Big old tree. But I you know, I want to mend fences, I'm looking for opportunities. I literally look over because I'm out there, I'm gonna start grilling. And then I smell, there's like this like, ooh, it smells good. Somebody's grilling out down there and I look over. I have no idea what you're about to say. And it's one of those grills that's got, it's just like a rectangular grill with like shish kebabs going across it. Like, uh, like uh, what I call lule. You know, you got that, you got chicken shish kebab and then you got the lule shish kebabs and boy, that stuff smells so good. Just and the, the long piece of meat. And they're, yeah, and they're grilling it out. And I look over and I see the guy who lives in the house, he's an, he's an older guy, he's probably, he might be 60. Before I knew it, I found myself yelling at him, smells good! Oh, okay. I'm su hold such on, a redneck. Hold on, hold on. Had he made eye contact with you before you said smells good? No. Big mistake, just I right said, off the bat, right? I said, Big smells mistake. good! And he looked up at me, and then I said, you know, I didn't think about any of this ahead of time. Well, I'm, yeah, just, I'm, going, I'm going totally on instinct, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, throw me a piece of that meat. Oh God. <laughs> what is wrong with you, man? I said, I'll catch it. And I held my hand out like that. And then I looked from him to like this woman that was standing next to him to see, see what her reaction was. And they were all just kind of like, I guess taking aback that this guy was yelling. Throw me a piece of that meat. <laughs> I'll catch it. Smells good. And then out of the corner of my eye, as I was surveying how the crowd was responding to my you know, friendliness, I see a piece of meat flying in the air. Oh, oh, oh. Hold, 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 okay, <laughs> hold on. So you specifically <laughs> called for meat to be thrown at you and then you're surprised when it happens? <laughs> what is wrong with you, man? No, I wasn't, well yeah, I was a little surprised. It was one of those friendly neighbor things that I just thought I was saying. It's like, smells good, throw me a piece, I'll catch it. What? Uh, there's, you didn't catch it. So again, it was just out of my periphery and just like a cat, I just instinctively, it wasn't coming at me, it was going far to my left. I lunged over and you know how there's those, the above the pony wall, cement wall, there's like those cables that prevent someone from like standing on the pony wall if they were a toddler or something and then just like careening over, all, yeah. tumbling all the way down into the neighbor's yard. So I reached as far as I could. I bent over that cable. Because he was throwing it short. He threw it short and always, to his right, to my left. It short, yeah. And I reached over like this and, and bent down. And if he had thrown it even more to the right, just a, a millimeter, I would not have caught it. You caught the I meat? I snagged it. And I did catch it. And I held it up and I said, and I took a bite out of it. It was a it was a strip of lule about that long. Was it cooked? It was cooked. I took a bite out of it and I was like, man, that's good. 
and uh, the woman turned to the to the man who threw it and said, "Wow, that was a really good throw." And I said, "No, that was a really good catch." <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I took another bite. So did somebody who had already been served meat who had it on their plate throw it or did the guy who was grilling throw it? The guy who was grilling threw it. And it was a surprise? I was, I, no, I yelled and then I was looking at other people. So I didn't see him actually throw it. And I said to him, you know what? I didn't see you throw it. I just saw the meat in midair. And I just happened to reach over and I was able to catch it. Did they it. clap? They didn't clap. And then after. What did he say? He didn't say anything. and. I ate the meat and I was like, I was like, I was like, yeah, it was a good catch. And they kind of laughed a little bit, but not really. And then, then they just went back to what they were doing. There was no conversation. Uh, I was smiling and I was like, I might have said one more thing. I don't know, but it wasn't like it. It didn't lead to like a budding friendship like I thought it would. And I had a little piece of the meat and I went inside and I had. I just felt like I needed to tell somebody. And Lily was playing video games and I told Lily the story. And like I said, I didn't think she wouldn't believe me, especially because I showed her the piece of meat that I still had. Where's a man gonna get a piece of meat just walking outside? So later when I told Lily and Lincoln, Lily and, I mean, Christy and Lincoln, and they, they didn't are. believe me. I said, well, ask Lily, she saw the piece of meat. And then Lily came out later and I was like, tell him what I did. And he was like, well, dad said that he caught a piece of meat, but like, I don't believe him. <laughs> and I'm like, Lily, I had the meat in my hand. She's like, well, I saw something in your hand, but like, you know, you could you could have had anything in your hand. And I was like, what? No one believes, so do you believe me? No, <laughs> not for a second. And then I was like, fine, no one's gonna believe me. We're sitting out by the fire pit eating the dinner that I grilled and their party down. Was it as down, good? Not as good. Their, their party had disbanded by this point. No one was outside. You don't even know this guy's name. I don't know his name. He don't know my name. He threw you meat. He threw me meat. I mean, it, he walked that, out. That's first name basis stuff right I there. I know, man. He walked out and I was like, there he is right there. You guys don't believe me. And I'm gonna, so I leaned over and I looked at the guy, I was like, hey, I just told my family about catching your meat. <laughs> and you know what? They don't believe me. And he looked up at me and he kind of he kind of smiled and nodded his head, but there wasn't an audible laugh. And then he grabbed something off of his grill and he went Walked back, back and inside. He, he didn't say anything. I was like, my family didn't believe me. And he like, he didn't say anything. You gotta go front door. This is a front door. This is a knock on the front door and say, hey, we gotta talk. You I gotta mean, back me up, man. You're gonna throw me meat and then deny it? I don't Keep think silent you, on I it? don't think it's about him validating your story at this point. I just think it's about you have to acknowledge this level of connection that you've made. It was cool, man. Like I have an I have I mean like I have an abrasion on my arm. Where, where, uh, look at that. Well, that doesn't prove anything. That's, in fact, from, the, now that's that you, from the cable. Now that you're showing me that, it's making me doubt your whole story. Like, you, know, I you, don't, you, over. I, I, you don't have it to show heroic. me, you don't have to show me scars. It was a heroic catching of meat. And I mean, he threw the meat as far as a man could throw a piece of lule. It well, could not have been thrown. You do farther. understand, you do understand what the next stage in this relationship is. You back to that assert dominant stuff? Uh, no, no, this is not, this isn't about your, this isn't like your other neighbor where you have to assert dominance. They put up a fence, by the way. Like, oh, I, really? Yeah, they can't see me in my shower anymore mm. through the window in my they, shower. They watched the vlog? I think they did. Yeah. This isn't an assert dominant situation. Um, this is this is a kinship, this is camaraderie, but you've got to return the meat. The, the meat. I know, I gotta <laughs> you throw. You have to throw meat to this man. I gotta throw meat to him. And you and then deny it? Like I just don't think he's a conversationalist. I think he keeps to himself. And I come on pretty strong. You well, know, you it's can like say that again. It's yeah. definitely my dad coming out in me. You know, it's like, hey, that smells good. Throw me a piece. Yeah, you know, it's, it's only, just like it's it only just, gonna get worse. just happens. But you know what? It leads to connection usually. You know, hey, this guy's putting himself out there. He almost killed himself trying to catch my meat. Yeah, we have a connection. Well, I mean, I'm not I, mad I, at I, do, I feel like you you have to, you have two options. You could just go front door and be like, "We need to talk about the meat situation." Um, my family doesn't my family doesn't believe it, but it's really not about that anymore. It's just I feel like I don't even know your name, man, and then see where it goes. Or equally valid and maybe more fun 
is you just need to be, you need to grow more, you need to be out there. In fact, you need to have meat on the ready. It doesn't even have to come from your grill. Just have some meat on the ready, just a meatball maybe. Yeah, just one. If you see them, you run in, you put it in, pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds, a meat, one meatball, 20 seconds, it'll warm up. You know, you're like, I got, I got your meat. Not his meat. Or um, I, I, I wanna return the favor. I wanna return the favor. I wanna return the flavor. Oh, yes. That's what you say. I wanna return the flavor. He will not catch it. Uh, he's, cause I mean. The fa it's, he's cool that he threw that meat back. He's, he's an older guy. I mean, probably can't see the meatball. He might need to be a bigger meatball. Isn't it cool that he threw the meat, you know? it's like I can't believe he did it. I mean, I can't believe I'd rather for him to give me the silent treatment, having thrown meat my way, than, well, than so to confusing. just not throw meat my that's way. That's what's so confusing. Feel stupid. Because the Venn diagram between people right. who, who will throw meat after being asked one time, yeah, and will not then talk about it later, yeah, that I, that doesn't feel like the same person. It's it's kind. Of, does he feel like we had some so, the connection was so deep, like it's an affair? Mm. Does he feel that? Does he, he feel feels like shame? Does he? Does he feel like he needs to keep it under wraps? Do I need to? Well, he did it in front of 10 people, so I don't think so. Maybe he But was those a... people weren't impressed. Maybe he was ridiculed. It was like, yeah, they didn't know what to say. I would have clapped. Like... I just, for one, I would have clapped if somebody caught meat like that. I mean, they definitely think I'm a redneck, right? I don't think they know about rednecks. It was a redneck move, wasn't it? Well, yeah, it was, but I don't think that's how they would categorize it. What do, they, what do you think they think of me? Strange. Well, what else have they seen? Strange you do? and outgoing. They hear you play your music. Yeah, yeah. They probably hate that. They have opinions about that, I'm sure. All right. Well, thanks for almost believing me. Yeah, I'd still, yeah. To be clear, I don't believe any of it. Let's get back into childhood. What I do believe is that we've got some hats for sale. Uh, the mythical kitchen's got a nice looking hat. I can't remember what they call this uh, spaghetti spaghetti. Uh, Octopus, octa spaghetti, squid, sp mm, like squid, squid getty. It's cool though. And here's the, uh, this is a total quinky dink. I got the feel good mythical morning hat here, which is sort of the dad style hat in purple. And I'm wearing the feel good Ooh, nice. hoodie because it just feels good. Quite an ensemble. Put it on for that reason, that reason alone. Mythical.com. Make it happen. Rep your boys. Let's see. Okay. Uh, if you could pick one thing from your childhood to bring back, what would it be? Let's get started with Teresa Dolly, who said two words, school pizza. I was so excited about this because I was thinking not necessarily school pizza, but you know me and food. You don't have to throw meat at me to get me excited. Um, yeah. I'm always thinking about food and I was thinking about the food that I enjoyed as a, as a lad and I was thinking, how could I recreate some of the things that I enjoyed at the Buies Creek Elementary cafeteria and square, for us, square or really rectangular pizza. You, you called it square pizza. But. You called it square pizza, but I wonder how good it would be if I were to eat a piece right now. Would I be like, this is the worst pizza I've ever had? I didn't like it, it at the time. You didn't like, you didn't eat the pizza at the time? No, I didn't like it. You didn't even eat it? I didn't even eat it. Did you ever try it? Yeah, I tried it. It wasn't horrible, but it was, I remember it being really soft. It was so good, I would eat, mo I would eat other people's who didn't finish it. And it was rectangular because it was a big sheet. And it fit into the tray. It fit into the section of the tray that was a rectangular, rectangular shape and they just cut it to fit that. Our pepperonis were cubed, were cubed. they not? Well, so. They weren't circular. In high school, there was cubed pepperoni on triangular pizza, which I also got. In uh, in, in uh, elementary school, it was cheese pizza with no pepperoni on it. It was just cheese pizza. Excuse me. But then in high school. Oh, just cheese, no they, pepperoni. If in in, in, in uh, elementary school, just cheese. In high school, they added that middle thing Mm -hmm. Our like sophomore the year, the island that had burgers, chicken, nuggets. chicken sandwiches. Oh yes, which is when I, I put uh, my shoe in there or Betsy Patrick's shoe in there. I can't remember what happened. Yeah, uh, and uh, triangular pizza with cubed pepperonis. 
I like that. I did don't. You, I did don't you know eat that? that the, um, did you eat any of the pizza at school? No. What did you eat in high school? I brought my lunch every day. I'm pretty sure. I don't in high school. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I brought my lunch ever in high school. Yeah, I, I was. You know, like, I had to have my pudding cup. I, I was like, have, I'm in high school now. I'm kind of becoming an adult. No, it's time. It's time to stop bringing your lunch. I don't think that school pizza would stand up now. But boy, I'd really like to taste it just to know what it just how good if if it could be as good as it was to me back then. Now, it man. seems like this should be a like a line in the freezer section, like school pizza. Just lean into it, but make it taste good. It's a good idea, right? So it'd be square pizza. What else would you have? Just that square. Just that. Let's just, just start called there. school pizza. Yeah. And it's square, mm -hmm. and there's cheese, of course, and, you, and there's a couple of different flavors. And it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, there's a cup of pudding in there too. Can we do that? Uh, no. Yes, we Nobody can. Nobody wants that. Yeah, we can. Um, staying with school, Jamie Mitchell Naragon tweeted, parachute day in gym class. Yes. The, uh, elementary school, yeah. uh, you know, Coach Elsie would break out the, the parachute and it was, you know, that was that was something. Where, where, how did the parachute become a thing? You know, is it, I mean, was it that like parachutists would just? I guess they would just abandon their parachutes and then, or there was a, there was just too many parachutes around. So then they started figuring out ways to do you use them in he, PE class. Do you think he had the parachute at all times, or do you think it was like carried from school to school? No, he yeah, one. Well, he had a nice storage area. Yeah, storage room. But we, uh, all the members of the class would grab the parachute and you put a ball in the middle and you flap that thing and to make the ball go up. And then we, st am I correct in that two things? First of all, I remember there being a hole in the middle. And I also remember in the playing a game where you would, you would throw it up, you would fluff it up, and when it was in the air, you would, you would run underneath. You wouldn't run underneath. You pick like it you, up. You designate a person to run and underneath. You pull it behind you and sit down. And you'd all be underneath. And it. everybody would be underneath it. You'd be like, we're in a room, we're wasn't, in a room. But wasn't there a game where it's like they would choose someone to run across Maybe. and get to the other side? Maybe, yeah. Boy, that was, that was I, thrilling. I, I watched a YouTube video that was a giant parachute. It was like um, hundreds of people doing one of these things. It was not a real parachute, it was just one that was designed for. Like popping up a ball? What were they doing with it? No, no, they were just doing it really high and getting underneath it. It makes you feel small in a good way. How often do you, how, how often do you think parachute day happened? I, I think it was twice a year twice at a most. Year. Yeah, it was like, it was why, it why, was special when it came but out. But why, why was it so, that's, that's why, I don't think, I don't think it was in storage. I, I don't know, I think you might have bad information. I think it would be like, well, it's at Irwin today. It's in Lillington today. It's in Dunn today. We got one parachute for the no, county. But I think we would know, we would associate the parachute with a parachute person. But I don't recall any parachute person showing up when the parachute was there. Well, the parachute guy drops off the parachute before you get to school. I think it's more about how if you play with that parachute four days in a row, you discover that like, oh. We're not really doing anything. This is kinda, this actually sucks. Yeah. But when it's once, or twice a school year, it's special. But he, Coach Elsie knew when to take it away. Mm. And he knew when to bring it back. Well, but it says followed, Jamie says followed closely by Scooter Day. And now the scooters that uh, are pictured here are these, basically a plastic platform with handles and four wheels. I, like I remember these. Ca the wheels are like casters, casters that you would, that you yeah. would Put underneath. Very, this is a very like dangerous, a speaker cabinet. Very dangerous toy. I, I don't remember this. I, we didn't have these. I, I know I've seen these before, but I don't think I've ever been on one, and we definitely didn't have them. Wouldn't that mess up the gym floor? I guess you would do that outside. You on do the this cement. on the on the concrete, and you would kind of. It was kind of like a. Is it roller? Not roller blade. Roller. Not uh, sit and skate. It was like a sit and skate, but a much more rudimentary design. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't. I don't remember this, Jamie. We didn't have those. 
in at Bowie's Creek Elementary School? Um, I've got one. Flat top haircuts. Flat top haircuts. Well, just just go in, just go into the military. Well, they were really now. I had one. Yep, you had one for a while. And uh, Rudolph Blanchard would cut it in, and then basically it's all it's like a buzz that's about that short, like almost bald in the middle. And of course, it, they make up for it by being a little bit higher on the sides. And then he would give you this thing that you put one of your fingers through. Uh, like a, a a comb, a plastic comb that would fit in the palm of your hand and, and go over one finger. And he would be like, and you gotta keep it up, you gotta keep it up. I don't remember him giving me any product for it. But, you know. I never had that haircut, but I remember the comb. You never had a buzz until co until college. Like, mm, it's, high, well, high school, when we started cutting each other's hair in high school. You did a buzz in high school? Yeah. It's funny. This is something that I've noticed in, it, when I kind of go back to the South. Um, it, there is a sort of a thing, and it was very common when we were coming up. But it's just like you shave all the boys' heads. Like if you if you like if there's a, bo a family with a bunch of boys in it, just for simple, just everybody's got a shaved head, and w like we did that for we had buzzes for years on end. Do you remember the buzz days? Like me and Cole both had buzzes. Buzzes or flat tops. Like flat top was as You're talking about elementary school. Yeah. 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 And the funny thing is, is my wife would never have let that happen to my boys. And I know it's like a generational thing, but like she was always interested in them just having hair. No. Not they never asked for a buzz. It was it was the style though, it was, I mean. But if you go back to the South, there's still kids that just have buzzes. It's just like, yeah, he's got a buzz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at this, at this point in time, in, those, in that environment, I think it's just, you know, it's just to simplify things. Now, I. I Why I, do you miss it? Well, I bring it up because I wanna present this as a, a I wanna present this as a question to you. Yeah. Um, okay, so. At some point, I'm going to cut my hair, right? Now, listen, it could be, it could be five years from now. I'm not saying I'm gonna just let it grow. I am gonna, I've already trimmed it once. I'll probably trim it again. It's getting to be kind of out of control. I'm gonna try to like get it a little bit closer. But it, for the foreseeable future, I plan on having some sort of long haircut, right? But I'm not gonna have it forever. You gotta make a bold hair choice. And the question is, whether it's a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, I have to go back to something. I have to go to something. I have to transition from this to something else. And I've talked to Jesse about this. I was like, I think when I, <laughs> and she gets so mad. I was like, I think when I get rid of this hair, I'm going to buzz it. I was like, I don't think that I'm going to try to cut it into a haircut. I think I'm gonna buzz it. And maybe I'll be like, huh, the buzz well, works. You know you're not gonna get rid of your beard. You feel like you're gonna oh, die with a beard. no, no, I'm not getting rid of my beard. You're gonna die with a beard. The only reason I would and get rid of my beard. That's a big factor in this. The only reason I would get rid of my beard is if I was trying to like, if I become so committed to like a spiritual discipline of detachment that would be the the proof it, would be in that pudding. It would be because it would with be your pizza. it would be difficult for me to deal with my unshaven face because I'm ashamed of it. Yeah, that's that's the real. Test. But maybe so maybe I'll get to some spiritual level where I, I, I that's what I do. But no, I'm talking about still having a beard, and I've never had that combo buzz with big beard. It might be a good look. Well, the, flat top. I think with there's going to come a day flat top. But again, if the beard gets bigger. The beard's then, not gonna, the beard can't get any bigger than it did. But yeah, but if it got. Because it starts get it, If it, it got grows that a, big, I, I think you could, I mean, your hair is kind of pulled back. It, you're kind of simulating something which has the, the shape of a buzz. It actually would not feel that much different. It wouldn't. So what do you think about it? I like it, I like the idea. <laughs> oh, I, you like it. Well, I think you should go with flat top, like Owen Wilson <laughs> flat in. Flat top, that's what I'm feeling. In Bottle Rocket flat Big top. beard and like a guile flat top. It, I mean, Owen Wilson's flat top in that movie, Wes Anderson's first movie, Bottle Rocket, 
is it's pronounced. It's like a two and a half inch tall. It's got some guile qualities to it. My hair might not support. No, I don't think it would. My hair's too curly and it wouldn't It wouldn't be, you, you would need that to be real tight and real uniform, but a buzz, anybody can support a buzz. Yeah. My wife would hate it, she would hate it. Mm, I actually don't, again, when the hair's pulled back, it's not that much different. You know what I'm gonna do? There is gonna be a day when I'm gonna, I'm gonna grow a beard. I'm gonna grow a big beard and it's, you know. And I'm gonna get glasses. I, I gonna, know you're gonna, you're not then, gonna get rid of your beard, but I wanna have a f total beard at some point. But um, it, it, it makes, because it's so white, it makes me look so much older. You look like I'm Santa, just, you look I'm like not Claus. ready to do it. But well, if you, the longer point, you wait, the more white it'll be. Well, yeah, but it'll be like, um, you know, like Le like Letterman's beard, like it's white and huge, and then he has no hair on his head. Of course, he's going, he's bald. bald. But I could, uh, I could do a, I could do a buzz. Yeah, I, I actually had big, ho I had high hopes. Had big hopes for having a like a really big beard, but the terminal length of the middle of my beard. I reached it and it just grows on the side and it becomes a giant unwieldy square and I'm just like, okay, that's it. I, I reached see, yeah. Max Beardley. I want to see what what would happen to mine. I don't, I don't, I don't know. But I don't, I don't miss the flat top. I don't miss any of the haircuts I ever had. None of them. At no point. At no point. But you only had like, th you only had two haircuts before this one. I don't Lifetime. Know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you had the same haircut all through elementary school. Well, Basically, I mean, and then you it's had... all it's all chronicled in the book of mythicality. <laughs> if you want to go back to that, sweet peach candy at passionate candy responded to us. I wish I could bring back some of the '80s cartoons. They were some of the best, from Jim to Shira to Thundercat. Saturday mornings were awesome. Thankfully, I can rewatch all my favorites to remind myself and relive the nostalgia. Um, so that's Saturday morning cartoons. And then somebody, she mentioned Thundercats. Marcus Nordberg also mentioned Thundercats. I wish they would make a new movie with Thundercats. Great content and always ha with a nice wholesome lesson at the end to sum it all up. Now, in, a, in an ad read that we did, I mentioned Thundercats and how I thought it should come back. I don't know if I planted this thought amongst the mythical beasts, but I'm, I watched the first episode of Thundercats. Like I just put it on. Recently? Recently, yeah, like a couple of weeks ago. Was it awful? Well, it, it starts off really interesting. Like the pilot episode, like the origin story of lion -O, he's a, he's lion? like, a, he's a he's a teen. He's like a pre, he's a preteen. He's a, he's a like boy. prepubescent boy. And he's, and, he, and he's in this futuristic environment where all these like, anthropomorphized cats are, are, are walking around and defending their fortress against this, these evil people. But all of the cats that you, that you grow to love that are like the key characters of Thundercats, they start off in the pilot episode naked. Naked. Now I say naked because when you picture or Google any of the Thundercat characters. They have suits on. They have suits on. But when I watch the pilot episode, I'm like, oh my gosh, they are, they're, well they're cats, but they don't have any clothes on. And they're walking around like humans, and there is. What is it, there a bulge, what is it? There's the, well there's the, there's the, the leopard woman who like has this like, these sexy curves, and she, I mean, she looks like, you know, like Jennifer Lawrence in the X-Men movies when like she's just blue and she's basically naked except without nipples. I have no idea what you're talking about. I've never thought about that. I've never dwelt on it. I've Nippleless never, Jennifer I Lawrence I never picture blue. it. Yeah, of course. I never we, picture it in the quiet moments. Me neither. Right. Me neither. So I don't know I'm, what you're I'm talking about. I'm basically making this up. This yeah, is yeah, just yeah. like a pop this culture like reference that I've- This is like the meat in your mouth. I've heard thing. from someone. <laughs> I if I would have caught it in my mouth. Such dirty old man. That would have been amazing. <laughs> Such well, dirty old listen, man. I'm watching this with my family. I'm like making them watch Thundercats and I'm like, first thing I'm, I'm like, they're naked. That leopard woman is, she's naked and she doesn't have nipples. That That's the best way I can describe it. That's the most accurate way I Which can describe exactly it. Which is exactly like, yeah. And they knew it too because like, I mean, 
she was strutting her stuff and at one point she winks at the camera. She knows what's up. She winks at the camera. Mm -hmm. And then through a series of events, they get clothes. Like yeah. this is part of their origin story. Wow. But it's not like they, they were already fully their characters, they just didn't have clothes. But then they were given clothes. But for a while there, they are all naked. Was it established who gave them the clothes? Or they showed up with clothes? I can't even remember that. Once they, once they got clothed, I stopped watching. Yeah, I was like, this is an interesting So anyway. it's like, yeah, I mean, there may be, it doesn't hold up once they get clothes. But yeah. before that, it is pretty that. exciting. Um, I don't think it should come back. I think that first half of the pilot episode is all you need. But here's the thing is that when you talk about television, just like Passionate Candy has pointed out here, you can get it to come back just by watching it again. Like that, that's the wonderful the, thing about media. But the Saturday morning cartoon experience is something that kids these days don't have. Like I remember, I remember I would have to get up early enough to make sure I didn't miss Smurfs. Well, it's what John Bailey is talking about here at Bailey Bailey John seventy five oh, yeah. appointment television. Back in the day, we had a weekly schedule of our favorite shows. Friday was TGIF, Tuesday was The Office, etc. Now we just binge. Uh, a season in a week. So, and this, I mean, this guy, John is significantly younger than us because he's talking about appointment television and he says The Office. Like, we were adults when The Office came out. But mm -hmm. but when The Office did first come out, it was, oh, you had to watch it, you know, you had uh, Tuesday on NBC and. Oh yeah, and I remember, I remember when Lost first came out and I was, you know, I was working as an engineer at the time and that's, like you would watch it because that's what everyone would be talking about at lunch the next day. It's like that classic water cooler conversation, like that literally happened to me every week. There was a, we had a water cooler. You would stand at it and you would have a conversation about lost. Well, there's a polar bear in the, on the uh, island. I can't explain that. I don't know what's going don't on worry, there. Don't worry, they won't. <laughs> and it was, I mean, it was a big motivating factor of just, of going to work. Just so you, because I I had something I'd watched that now I could talk about it. Well, th I mean, this made me think about. I mean, f you know, we're never going back to this place, right? I mean, now that this is just not going to happen unless the unless the bottom drops out, technologically speaking. Or are we? I mean, like the way that Disney Plus is releasing all of their yeah, series. But that I mean, that's, I mean, like we we made an appointment to watch The Mandalorian and Wandavision, and you know, well, it's, I so every week we look forward is, to those. That is, you know. I do think that that's part of the philosophy behind why HBO hasn't strayed from the one for the from the weekly release and Disney Plus is doing it is that you know the conversation around WandaVision lasted you know yeah it it, it, it the it, duration of season 1 really so there is there is definitely strategy but I think that the product that you're selling has to be good enough to be able to compete without being binged Game of Thrones yep um but it made me think about not just appointment television, but going all the way back to our childhoods where it wasn't just, this is when the shows are coming on and you watch them or you don't, but just the number of channels. And like, I'm talking 80s, I'm talking basically three channels and PBS maybe. Yeah. Like I remember, I feel like I remember, maybe I don't, I feel like I remember when Fox became a channel or when we first got it. Cause all I remember was NBC, CBS and ABC and PBS. And I was thinking about this in the context of our society. And you know, one of the things that people have talked about is one of the things that's contributing to the high level of polarization is everybody gets their news from their own source, right? Yeah. And back in the day it was like, well, if Walter Cronkite said it, you believed it and that was the only source. There are definitely times when I'm We like, didn't watch Walter, but we watched Dan Rather. Dan Rather, Sam Donaldson. Yep. Uh, you know, Sam Tom Don Brokaw. Sam Donaldson will, he, he makes appearances on uh, n News Now. Really? I know, I've seen Dan Rather make Well, Dan Rather is like still He's totally still with it and stuff. making funny tweets. Yeah. He's like in, he's in the conversation and he'll be a guest, but Sam Donaldson who, even when he retired, his eyebrows were already. He's like a Muppet. Doing incredible things. In the best way possible, yeah. They're doing 
even more unspeakable things now. Oh, really? And uh, he, yeah, I don't know. I can't remember who, who, he'll he'll come on and talk to somebody, one of these anchors. But anyway, it just makes me think about, boy, the simpler times of A, not caring at all about the news, and then if you did care about the news, you all cared about the same news. And when it I came miss to, that when you can't oh yeah and when it came to television shows you watched stuff that you didn't like because you had to watch something I you know what and I think that changed everything for us again I don't want to be the old fart who says oh uh, well this generation and back in my day but one of the things I do think is that our options for what we could watch were so few that it kind of transferred over into everything that we could experience like. Even when we think about what we're gonna eat as a family, you know, I'll be like, you know, my dad would just say, we're going to the Mexican restaurant in Fuquay Varina. It wasn't like, yeah, where do you guys wanna eat? I mean, yes, you got to make a decision what you were gonna eat once you got there. They didn't order for you. But where you were gonna eat and when you were gonna eat was not a family conference. <laughs> but now everything's a family conference. And you know you got you got kids who have been given have been empowered to the point that they can make all these choices, and they're like, "Well, I don't I don't like that, and I don't like that, and I don't like that, and I don't want that." Well, we don't want to watch that. Just sitting down to try to watch a movie together, like, what is your process for making a decision or suggesting a family movie? Because that has gotten I've given up. That's man. gotten out of hand in my family sometimes. But that's why we only watch Survivor. <laughs> Like, I mean, because nobody's tired of it and there's just more and more seasons and it's, it's, there's no conversation. You just keep, the only conversation is are we gonna watch another one or not? Well, I've, I've had some success with choosing family movies, but there's a lot of pressure. And I feel like they, they believe me that I, but there was one, what was it? What, what, what did I, oh. <laughs> I, uh, we had watched uh, Tombstone, right? Yeah. And That's so good. everybody was on board for Tombstone. Great movie, holds up. Kids loved it. Next night, Wyatt Earp. No, it didn't go Wyatt Earp. I went too hard. I went all the way to Unforgiven. That's um, Clint Eastwood, Unforgiven, like mm -hmm. one of his later. I mean, well, he's been around forever. But That's yeah. a great movie, but it's a little more intense, isn't it? No, what's wrong with it? Um. Uh, well, I'm trying to remember what en ended up happening. I think we ended up getting through it, but. Morgan Freeman and Clint Eastwood. It's an incredible movie. Is it slow? Is it, I can't remember what, what could be bad about it. It's just, well, I mean, Tombstone is like real funny and a little bit more lighthearted. Unforgiven is just a little bit. I mean, it starts out with, the, you know, like the woman's face getting cut up and stuff. It's like. Oh, oh yeah. You know. I don't, I don't remember. The it starts details. out a little rough. So they they uh, they lost, I lost their trust. Mm. But what I'm saying, my hope, my point is, is that when my dad came home with a VCR, first of all, he came home with the VCR. <laughs> he rented the like VCR. he didn't buy the VCR. He rented the VCR and the VHS tapes and walked in the door, and I was like, I don't care what he has. He has a VCR. It's a movie in our house. We have a movie in our house. This is the peak of society, is what I was thinking. And it didn't matter what movie we, was, we, we played. And he would rent two movies. Rent it for two days, right? Mm -hmm. Watch one one night, watch one the next night. Two best nights of my life. Uh, boy, my kids are much harder to please. You know, when you're talking about like linear programming and if you miss it, you miss it. Like even if you, if you really had to go to the bathroom during Seinfeld, it's like you would miss something. <laughs> you, you couldn't get it back. You'd have to ask somebody. About, you'd have to infer that part. If somebody called you on the phone and you didn't screen it, you know, you'd miss that part of it. Some people did record on on the VHS. I mean, you told me that your father-in-law. Oh yeah, he was, he was still. Still using a VCR to record soap operas as recently as like two years ago. Yeah, I think he, I think he still does even now. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I think he does. I guess he don't want to be he don't want to be in the house during the day. But you know, we were talking about doing some sort of like we have so much content. We've tossed around the ideas, come up a number of times of doing like 
a channel. A mythical channel that's just constantly playing and you can go in there and watch it with whoever's, with watch whatever's playing at that moment with whoever else is, is watching. Well, if, you, if you took like, a, you just have every a, good mythical morning, program. every good mythical more, 24 pro- every hours. ear biscuit, every sketch, every short form thing, everything we've done on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, and you just put it back to back to back to back to back. I mean, how much content would that be before it repeated itself? The problem At is- At least a month. From a business standpoint, I think it would be fun, but from a, for, first of all, it would be- A difficult technical exercise. Well, to answer your question, how long would it be? I think Jacob did something where it was like, if it was just Good Mythical Morning, I mean, we could do the math right quick. Even if we say 10 minutes an episode times, let's just go ahead and say 2,000 episodes. That's um, 20,000 20, minutes, minutes divided by 60 is six will go into 2,000. It's 3,000. 3, 3,000 hours? That doesn't make sense. I think that's right. We just did the math. It's a little over 3,000 hours. No. That sounds crazy. I can't do math in my head right now. Well, you use your calculator. Okay. But from a business standpoint, we can't, you know, there was, we couldn't justify it. You know, it's like, you, there's a lot of trouble to make that happen. I think it would be cool. Oh. I think you might be thinking it's right 300, now. 333 hours. So we were off by a factor of 10. Uh, but you divide that by 24. So it's f- two weeks, 14 days, Only 13 two points. Weeks. So two, but that's just GMM and also you're underestimating the average yeah. length of an episode. And then you add in Good Mythical Moors and you basically double that. That's a month. And then you throw in everything else, you're gonna get at least a week of stuff that we've done else. Maybe, I don't know, maybe half a week. Yeah. And yeah, you we got at least a month of content. And you rerun stuff. The reason that I still think that it might be not that bad of an idea is because you can, the, the whole idea of, of, a, of linear viewing of anything is the connection between other people who are experiencing it at the same time, right? So yeah. it's just like, hey, l- we go to the website where they're streaming the mythical show, the mythical show would be on there too, the mythical TV channel, and uh, then you go in the chat room and you talk You talk about it in the moment, like, oh, this is right. that old thing they did a long time ago, I forgot all about it. I still think there's something to it. Now that we're talking about it, I think people are gonna ask for it. Yeah. I mean, th- there's there's kids channels on YouTube that then take all of, they get millions of views on their videos and then they just make this live stream that's this, this concept. And they do it because they wanna be able to, Parents want to be able to put their kids in front of something that is yeah. passive for you yeah. know a longer period of time. I don't know. Maybe we should think about it some more. Okay, Kina or Kenna, Cleep bleep. bleep, having sleepovers with my best friend and laughing all the time. Dang man, I mean, I I miss that. Like, I mean, would it be weird if I was like, hey, I'm, can I come over tonight? We're gonna like, can we we can just sleep on the couches in your in your living room? Your yeah, sleep? it would be, yeah. yeah. It would be weird if you did that at my house too. But I'm trying so to So it's think, not me that's weird, so it's, the, it's the act. And I just wanna, I just wanna clarify well, that. What is, I'm trying to figure out, what, why do people, why do friends stop sleepovers? Cause like as a kid, part of the whole idea of a sleepover is we're gonna stay up late, you know, you don't want your parent to have to come pick you up late or whatever. There's a sense of adventure waking up in the morning. I mean, why don't friends, adult friends, I mean, I know that adult friends, like inside friends like John Mayer sings about (laughs) are doing sleepovers. I'm not talking about sexual partners. I'm talking about platonic friendships as adults. Well, when you have- Planned sleepovers. I'm not talking about like, hey man, can I crash here? I'm talking about, hey, Friday night, sleepover. How come that doesn't happen? Maybe it does happen with, with single friends, but like if you have a partner, if you have children, in the house, it's like, you know, it's associated with kids and you, then it starts you, to feel you're weird. You're telling me that you think that single people without children are planning sleepovers as adult friends right now? I haven't heard of it. I don't think that's I a didn't thing. wanna, yeah, that should be a thing. You set up a little fort? Yeah. And see, that's where it gets to be like a kid though. Where, where are you gonna sleep? Hey, that's what it is. The adult body needs uh, a, Bear- a bed, needs their own bed that they're familiar with. When you're a kid, 
I could sleep on a on a on a gym floor. I I could sleep anywhere. I could sleep in a chair. I could sleep on a fence. It gets. I mean, whenever I would sleep over at your house, I give you a nice mattress. You would give me. You had a mattress underneath your bed, and you would pull that out, and I would sleep on that. Yeah. Or sometimes we would both sleep in the guest room, and because we had there was a couch and a mattress in there. Maybe you'd move the mattress. I you, would also just put a sleeping bag on the carpet and sleep. It was, it was not a problem. But what, so what would we do now? Because it, yeah, it is difficult when you're like, well, I'm gonna, you know what, it's getting, I'm kinda sleepy. I'm gonna uh, go to my, my bed, bed with my wife. And we'll, okay, well, I'm gonna lay on the floor by you and Jesse or vice versa. You know, it's like, well, I'm just gonna sleep <laughs> you, on your you couch. You get a sleeping bag and sleep next to us. Yeah, that's what you do. No, I think we would both need to sleep in the living room. In a different room. Together. <laughs> You can't sleep in your own bed. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is gonna happen, and I think we discovered why. I mean, I've got it. It's the comfort of your own bed. Adults value that too much. Why am I gonna sleep on yeah, the floor? Even if it's 3 a.m. It's not worth I'm gonna it, go I'm back driving home. home. I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna get my bed. I don't wanna wake up at your house. Yeah. That's strange. That's exactly what it is. And then you wake up in the morning and then you're like, oh, what, we eat breakfast together? Like, like what? what happens now? You know, yeah, you don't want that. Well, what, what? I was thinking we should talk ourselves into it. I mean, if you're- Well, we could do a vlog about it, for with, sure. With your, again, with when, you're, when your kids come downstairs and like you and your best friend are like asleep on the couch, <laughs> it's kind of, but if you're single, single friends should be sleeping over. What, this is a movement, we, we, I mean, we can do it for them. Are we missing something? Air, I think air, this air would mattresses, work. Air mattresses, air mattresses. You know, air mattresses. Um. So it's, I mean, a lot of single people, they'll have like another bed, might have a guest bed. It may, but uh, that's, not, that's not a sleep of, if you're not sleeping in the same be, room. sleeping in the same room. You gotta sleep in the same the room. The second part of this is in laughing all the time. And what I think, I think you, Kina, you may not necessarily be putting these two things together, but I'm assume that I'm taking that. That's how I'm interpreting this, because oh yeah, that's the fun of a sleepover. All the time. Is my you know sleepover, making each other laugh, not being able to shut up, having my dad come up the stairs and get mad at us because we were so loud because we wouldn't stop laughing about something. Yeah. Like, yeah, but that that level of laugh attack. That's also a difficult thing to. Difficult thing to attain as an adult. Well, you know, that's where alcohol comes in. Uh, okay, drunk sleepovers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're adults. Okay, all right. I mean, going going on a trip somewhere, like getting an Airbnb with your friend or friends, that's a sleepover that's still acceptable because no, but. But you sleep in different rooms. You sleep everybody in different gets rooms. their own room. Hmm. But that is, that is a form of a sleepover. I, I, I insist on this coming back. It's just you gotta remove the stigma. You know, keep the, keep the plutonic nature intact, but get rid of the stigma. Sleepovers. Hey kids, Rhett's sleeping over tonight. We're gonna be, I got a, you got a big couch in there. Hey, it's an open invitation. Uh, okay. You're thinking well, about it. Well, yeah, we'll, we, you know, we'll, 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 we'll consider it. We'll, uh, tell us what you think about it. Um, but I really like this one. This one, this one has sort of a, a feel to it from Lynn LJCO six two one seven nine. Okay. <laughs> Late summer night, sitting under the street light with your neighborhood best friends, discussing the universe, life, and how you would be friends forever not knowing that life would make most of you drift apart and catch you up in the rat race of adulthood to be young again. Hmm, well you know, I mean, I don't mean to rub it in, Lynn, but that's kinda what we're still doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry you don't have that, but I mean, I definitely remember f f when we would have sleepovers, we would go out and we would lay down in the pitch dark, we would lay down in the middle of the street on the like the paved road in front of my house. So few cars would come down the road at night that we would lay down in the middle of the road just because it was a funny thing to do. I remember that our neighbor came outside when he saw us like walking around outside in the dark and he was like, Link, 
you okay? Have you been drinking? No, oh, I don't remember this. Yeah, and I was like, no, 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 we're just hanging out outside. Yeah, that's what we do. We hadn't been drinking, but uh, he was kind of, he was patrolling us, yeah, as and, Christy would and, say. And, and do not try this at home. Yeah, don't lay out in the but street. But if we lived on, you know, if you, a car came, we you would lived get on up. a super, super. I mean, I lived on a dead end, but you lived on a country road that the, the cars were flying, but you could hear them coming from a mile away, literally. And um, yeah, we just get out there, and there were no street lights. First of all, no, it was pitch black, or it was just the moonlight, and you'd lay right on the double yellow line, and you just felt like the road was still warm. Yeah, at but night. there was just something about that lying in the middle of the road, which you knew was like, at any minute a car could come, and I'm just gonna be looking up into the sky. Yeah, there's just something, there's something to that. Li living in a place where you can lie in the middle of the road, yeah. you know, there's just, that. There, yeah, it's like, I guess I could lie in like the neighborhood street in front of my house, but. Yeah, I live on a dead somebody end road now. Somebody would call somebody. somebody. Could, you can, I mean, if I walked outside and saw my kid, one of my kids and his friend laying in the middle of the cul-de-sac, I'd be like, I get it, yeah, I yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah. I'll be back inside, I, I'm sleeping you, over with my adult friend. You guys been drinking? <laughs> yeah, man, Saturday morning cartoons. What do you remember watching? I remember Smurfs. I remember, sh uh, there's a show called Shirt Tales. They had they had like they had little stuffed animals that you get at Hardee's. If it was if it was worth watching, it was worth having its own little thing at like the Hardee's version of a Happy Meal. California Raisins had a cartoon, but I didn't watch that. I did watch the Gummy Bears cartoon. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. I watched that. I watched the Care Bears cartoon. Yeah yeah yeah. That was a big. Was one. it on one channel or? Or did multiple channels have Saturday morning cartoons? Uh, for a while, all three had Saturday morning so cartoons. So did you choose a channel or did you uh, switch? I, rem I, I don't remember. I, there's a Mr. T <laughs> cartoon. That was, I liked that a lot. And then at a certain point, they would switch over to being live action. So you would get, I mean, you get like the Saved by the Bells of the world and when did you stop getting up early to watch Saturday morning cartoons? Uh, I don't remember. I just I I don't I don't remember losing interest. But I did. I definitely was not getting up in middle school. Mm, yeah, I don't think so. I was sleeping until like one o'clock. By the time I was like in seventh grade. Yeah, because that point you stay up late. Yeah. I don't know. That was nice to go down, go down memory lane, man. Get yourself some animated gummy bears. Get that taste in your mouth. Thanks for your uh, your responses to that prompt. Uh, you know, keep the conversation going on the internet. Hashtag ear biscuits. I got a wreck though. Oh yeah, it's my wreck. Link, Link's got a, got a wreck. Um, I'm gonna go back to music for the, for this recommendation. Um, I I watched. Well, I guess I'll recommend the documentary too. I watched the Bee Gees documentary. Um, it's on HBO, 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, How Can You Mend a Broken Heart is the name of it. It it doesn't talk about their personal lives as much as just enough to for it to be a backdrop to the music. So it is a music-centric documentary. It's not, it doesn't talk about, I don't know, the drug use or, or you know, it goes into, I mean, it was three brothers and then Two of them died, and well, there were four brothers, but the youngest brother uh, was not a member of the band until much later. He was kind of like grandfathered in, no, no pun intended, but um, th they're all dead except for Barry, who's arguably the, the most recognizable BG. Or the beard and long hair blonde. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, uh, the documentary is great if you're into music documentaries like I am. And the way, you know, there's so many fascinating points in their career, like the, the fact that they completely reinvented themselves and the, what you know is the Bee Gees, first and foremost, like the defining sound of the disco era and like that falsetto voice is something that they discovered as like a second wind in their career. And I just, I love those type of stories in the specifics of how they discovered that sound 
um, with that song Jive Talking, and then but they did when they released it to the radio stations, they didn't put they didn't they didn't put their name on it because they didn't want people to associate it with the Bee Gees because the Bee Gees were associated with like they came out of the Beatles era and they were you know they were associated with kind of like this folksy movement and they had a lot of hits from from that era but then they were they kind of had a stigma that then where they were basically inventing and defining what disco would sound like before it got crapped on um yeah they didn't they didn't want to use their name so they they and and it became a hit and they were like whoa that's the, that is that's the same Bee Gees? like they're singing in another register this is totally different what did they say that they were um they just like unbanned unnamed i they didn't put the name on the record i they didn't i don't think they used a pseudonym as far as i can remember from the documentary they just didn't say it was just like jive talk and play it um and then they were playing it before they knew it was the Bee Gees and then deciding that they loved it. But the one song that I'm obsessed with, because there's a stigma around the Bee Gees in, in like uh, the disco era and like they get into that, they explain all of that too and how they were brought down but they didn't deserve it. And people like Justin Timberlake are in the documentary standing up for the Bee Gees, rightfully so. And I, I just, I had not intentionally avoided them but I just had, I had missed all these amazing harmonies and like, and their their melody structures are just like so enticing. But the one song that I'm obsessed with is Too Much Heaven. Mm. Too Much Heaven, listen to that song and if you like it then you can watch the documentary but it's just so sweet, man. It It is sweet. Well if you want some sweet tunes, Tune in to Too Much Heaven from the Bee Gees. And we'll catch you next week on another episode of Ear Biscuits. Yeah. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best. 